Welcome back. I'm here once again with Alistair Cook, and you are watching AWS Networking, Episode 4B, VPC, High Availability, Hands-On. And uh, Time to get our hands dirty. Absolutely. So let's recap what you just talked about in the first video, which, of course, you can go over to YouTube, get the playlist, and watch, and then, uh, and then you can come back and watch the Hands-On as well. So the really important thing in the, the last video was the idea that we build our applications across multiple data centers on AWS. The multiple data centers are called availability zones, and we build our applications so that it can survive the failure of an availability zone. That means that for networking, we need to replicate the networking we have in one availability zone into a second availability zone, and often a third availability zone, in order for our application to span those availability zones. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Awesome. We're going to start with the networking that we built in the first episode, which has a public subnet, a private subnet, and a NAT gateway providing internet access for the private subnet. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mirror those subnets. So we're going to create two um, public, a public and private subnet in a different availability zone. Then we're going to deploy another NAT gateway and set up some route tables to match. Okay. So if we pop into the AWS console, I've already created a VPC here called Pizza Sydney. There's a really nice little functionality in the console where we can come in here and say, I just want to see that one VPC. Hide the other one, the default VPC that everybody has and you don't use. So now I'm just seeing the resources inside my Pizza Sydney VPC. And what we can see in there is I have two subnets. I have a public subnet and a private subnet. So here's the public subnet called Pizza Public One. Uh, and it's got a Pizza Public Sydney uh, route table attached to it. And then we also have a private one, which has got a Pizza Sydney Private One route table attached to it. Okay. Now these two subnets both live in the availability zone called AP Southeast 2A. So I'm going to create a public and a private subnet in AP Southeast 2B. Same process as we used last time we created a, a uh, subnet. So that was called Pizza uh, Public 2. It's going to be in my Sydney Pizza VPC, and I'm going to specify it must be in AP Southeast 2. Okay. Cider block for this one is 10. 64.2.0 slash 24. And we can just create that. So now we've got a new subnet called Pizza Public 2. I've dropped Sydney out of there, so it's a little easier to read and list. Then we create another subnet. This one is going to be called Pizza Private 2. It also lives in the Pizza Sydney uh, VPC and lives in the AP Southeast 2B availability zone. It is 10.64.8.0 slash 22. And we'll go and create that. So now we've mirrored our public and private uh, subnets. Okay. Jeff, what else do we need today? We mirrored them, but we didn't connect them, did we? So we're going to do route tables. Okay. We also need a new NAT gateway. So let me just check that I have an IP address assigned for my NAT gateway. I do. I have an IP, a public IP address here to use my, for my second NAT gateway. And then I'm going to deploy a new NAT gateway. And this one is going to be in Pizza Public 2 public subnet for NAT gateway. And then I'm going to choose that IP address and I'm going to add a name tag called pizza NAT2. That creates me my second NAT gateway. So now I have two NAT gateways. The pizza NAT2 one is still creating. Okay. While it creates, we'll do our route table associations. So in this VPC, I have some, some um, route tables. So I have a, what's this one? It's really frustrating that this 
resize option doesn't actually work for me here. So which route table have we got? This one's Pizza Sydney Public. Now, if we pop back to the diagram, you'll see that both public subnets have a default route going out to the net gateway. Okay. Uh, sorry, to the internet gateway. Okay. And that the internet gateway is a regional service. So it's the same identity whether it's in zone A or zone B. So I can use the same route table for Pizza Public 2 that I've used for Pizza Public 1. Okay. And that's this route table here. And we can see the subnet association. And we can edit that subnet association. And we say, I want the other pizza public subnet to be associated in here. So that's now made the second public subnet actually given it access to the internet. Nice. But for the private subnet, it's a different NAT gateway. So okay. pizza private two on the bottom right goes to a different NAT gateway to pizza private one. And so I need a new route table for that. So on here, I'm going to create a new now route table, and I'm going to call this pizza private two. It's going to remain inside our pizza Sydney. Okay. Is there any reason why you wouldn't want to do a private on the second, the second one? So we we're, we're going to do both availability zones with the same configuration. That's that's really important. In another video, I'll talk about some of the design options that you have around not using private subnets. Okay. And there are some use cases where you wouldn't have private subnets. And but then, let's, let's look at that later in a, in a slightly yeah, wider context. Absolutely. And then the same thing with public. You can, you can do a private only, but not a public. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. So let's do a subnet association for our pizza public, which is uh, private. There we go. 1064.8.22. We'll associate the route table, and then we'd better set some routes up. Add a route for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0, and the target is going to be a NAT gateway, and it's going to be pizza NAT2. So now we've got two pairs of subnets. We have two NAT gateways. We have three route tables in use. We've got that replicated network that we have here. Nice. Didn't take us long to do. Uh, I have a AWS CLI script that will build this all out, and it takes about 30 seconds to run, and there's about 50 lines of code in that script. OK. So the whole lot can be and should be automated. And it really is a case of just replicate what you have. And of course, we could replicate the whole lot again on the third availability zone that's available to us in Sydney. OK. One last quick question, and that mm. is, is there a priority of which, uh, which subnet it would go from? Or can you choose, or what? So at this point, we haven't controlled how traffic and connections come in. That would be done as we hit our next step, which is going to be to build this highly available website. Okay. So then the load balancer at the front is our entry point, and that's what controls it all. Okay. So I'm going to just run the script that builds that for us automatically, and Jeffrey is going to do the magic of video editing uh, to, to show us the result of that without having to wait. All right. Let's do it. All right. Well, that was pretty quick. Magically quick. Magically. It's good thing nobody's showing any clocks. So we now have a couple of EC2 instances and a load balancer. So let's take a quick look over there and see if our load balancer is all happy. Let's come down and take a look at our load balancer and take a look at the, there we go. So we have our load balancer. We have a, a DNS name for our load balancer. Let's grab that and open up in a new tab and see if we've got a website on there. So we have our usual Owl's Pizza website. And um, we can see the platform IP down here is a 9.245. So that's in our public two subnet. And if I refresh this maybe a couple of times, now we've got it in the 5.139, yeah. which is the public one. Okay. So it's definitely going backwards and forwards between the two 
functional availability zones that we have. And every couple of refreshes, that's probably a Firefox issue. Every couple of refreshes, it's getting the different IP address. Okay. So that's popping backwards and forwards between two different EC2 instances, but that doesn't really prove us a lot of availability. So what happens if we terminate one of those EC2 instances? Do we still have a running website when we kill one of the web servers? Mm, okay. That's the important test of have we got a highly available application. So we're going to come in here and we're going to find the EC2 instance that is currently running in 2A since, uh, no, it was 2B I diagrammed, wasn't it? Uh, since I diagrammed it in 2B, so this is the EC2 instance in 2B, we can see that its IP address down here is that 9.245. So okay. this is the IP address that should stop showing up when I terminate the EC2 instance. Yes, go and terminate the EC2 instance. So the web server is no longer operating. But you can bring it back if you wanted to, right? Oh, no, I've killed it completely. Oh, so you'd have um, to recreate, recreate to... Uh... So the great thing is that that recreation is usually done with automation. Now, those two EC2 instances were created with an auto-scaling group, and the rules on the auto-scaling group say there should be two. Okay. So in about 10 minutes' time, that EC2 instance will be replaced by the auto-scaling group. Got it. What do we got? 5.139, 5.139, 5.139. Our application is still up, but it's only coming from the one surviving EC2 instance. If we only had one web server and we terminated it, we wouldn't have a website anymore. Yeah. So this is the point about having a highly available application that's spread across multiple availability zones. If it was the EC2 instance having a problem or the EBS service having a problem, well, now our application continued to operate despite the fact that something failed. Okay. And that really is the fundamental idea about having this highly available networking across multiple availability zones is that everything fails all the time, but your application needs to continue to operate. And we're building in the network, networking to support our application to be highly available. Okay. Cool. That's all I wanted to show in this video. Jeffrey, any uh, questions now? Uh, everything looks fairly straightforward in, in the replication and the termination. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we're good to go. So yeah, we built a, a network infrastructure that's highly available for our application. So where, where are we going to go next? So we're going to continue with looking at network design. And I was going to look at networking beyond a single virtual private cloud. OK. So often the VPC is about a single application, but we need to glue together multiple applications. And so we've got a couple of episodes uh, just taking a look at it. There's a couple of episodes that are about connecting inside of AWS between different VPCs. But also we'll do some episodes about connecting back to your on-premises network because often people are doing a hybrid cloud deployment. And so the AWS network is just another data center connected to their enterprise WAM. Okay. So we'll look at how you do that too. Okay, sounds good. And you guys, you don't want to miss that. So our, our, just so you know, our schedule is we post on Sunday evenings uh, in the Eastern time. It would be about 5 p.m. for Pacific time. It would be about uh, 2 p.m. Uh, and uh, we, of course, we post the first video uh, at 2 p.m. and then the second video at uh, the uh, half hour. So if you're on the East Coast, 5 and 5.30. If you're on the West Coast, 2 and 2.30. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and uh, definitely give us some comments, give us some feedback, because that's going to help us uh, with the direction of this show and how we can help you understand how to do all this stuff, whether it be a AWS or uh, some of the other projects we have coming up because we have some really cool projects mm -hmm. coming up very soon uh, dealing with internet uh, as in your internet connection in a business and a bunch more. Can't talk more about that, but that's what we got right now. So Alistair, thanks a lot for uh, joining me for another episode of, uh, of Build Day TV. Thanks, Jeffrey, and thanks for asking the questions because it always helps to understand if somebody's asking questions. Absolutely. So you've been watching AWS Networking Episode 4B, VPC, High Availability, Hands-On. Remember to uh, subscribe to the playlist so you can watch them all. Take care.